Hello and welcome to today's video where we'll talk about using the internal storage of our mobile device to save some data. And this is going to be, as always, presented in the easy way in Android Studio. So we are going to use Java as programming language and we'll build this application. The user interface is very simple. It has a text view which will display the status of the application, for example, waiting text input over here or text saved in whatever file name we give it. Then we have this edit text, and this is the place where the user will input the text or whatever information he wants to save inside a file. And we have three buttons, which allows us to save the information to file, load the information from file, and delete the information from file. So this is all that there is to it. More interesting is the code. So let's switch to Android Studio and see the code and see how it works. We will start as always by opening Android Studio. And once you create a new project, a new empty activity project, it will load and look something like this. Let's close the project folder. So we only have two files open, the main activity Java and the activity main XML file. This is where you will find this design mode. We can create the user interface over here. So let's start to do just that. First, we can cancel all the constraints. Then for this text view, we just search for size attribute. Let's increase the size to, you know what? Let's do something else, it's going to be easier. We put the text view on top. Then we go to the text tab, we take a plain text. This will be for collecting the user input. Then we need some buttons. We'll need a button for adding the text. We'll need one button for loading the text from the file and one button for deleting the text. Okay, now we select the text view, we search for the size attribute and we can increase the text size to 24. Then with the same attribute selected, we move to the text view and the size should go to 24 as well. And for the buttons, we can select all three of them and then we increase the text size to 20. This should be large enough. Okay, with the buttons still selected, you can search for the style attribute. And from the style, you can select the button small. This way you have smaller buttons. Then again, with the buttons selected, you can align them horizontally, all of them. Okay, now we have a bit of space. We want to have the same baseline, right click on the first show baseline and refer it to the first button. You do the same for the second button. If I'm going a bit fast over these steps, don't worry, I have a dedicated video for the user interface so you can watch it and uh, learn how to build your user interface over there. You find the link in the description of this video. Okay, going back to these buttons, let's uh, give some ideas. First will be BTN add. From adding, the text should reflect just that, add. Okay, let's search for the on click attribute. On click, here we'll say on click add. This will be the method that we want to have executed when we click on the button. Let's move to the second button and we'll say on click load. And this is just the name that we choose. So it can be something else for you. You don't have to put the same as I do. And for the third button, okay, let's select the third button. Okay, let's make it again on click load. This will be for the second button. And for the last button, it should be on click delete. Okay, for the second button, let's go and change the text. First, btn load. This will be for the ID. For the text, we'll just say load. For the last button, we'll say btn delete for the ID. And for the text, we'll say delete. Okay, this takes care of the buttons. Moving up, you have this edit text. We'll just call it 
edit text. This will be its ID. We don't need any text inside. However, we need to have a hint and we'll just call it enter your text or any text. And just to make it look a bit nicer, we can search for the text attribute. And inside here, we should find text alignment. We can just make it center. Okay, and the last part with the text, text view, this will be text view for ID. And the text will say, waiting text input. Good, now we have to set some constraints because all these controls are not constrained and we have this constraint layout that we are in. We can select all of them to begin with and we can select some horizontal constraints. And let's set a vertical constraint as well. I start with the first one. And the second, I just refer to the first. So the edit text will be constrained to the first one. We'll just give a bit of space. And for the buttons, it's enough for me to constrain the first one. The others are attached to it. And I have my user interface. I can save it. Don't worry about these red exclamation marks. This means that I didn't implement the methods at this time, but we are moving to the main activity Java file and we are going to implement the methods. Okay, let's start over here with some variables. What we have until this point, we have the text view, edit text and a file name, a string. This is the name of the file that we will use to save our information in. And we have the text view and edit text, of course, that we are going to use to uh, display the application status and to get the user input. Inside the onCreate method, we have to reference the text view and the edit text. And for this, you say text view, and this you say find by ID. You just say resource ID, and from the drop down menu or the list, whatever you call it, you just select this text view for the first one, the text view, and then for the edit text, you repeat the same process, only this time you will select the edit text. And this takes care of the on, on create. Now we need three methods. Okay, now we have the method that will be executed when we press the first button. This is the, bat, the btn add. And it's called on click add. We have to do another two to create another two methods. This will be the second one will be for loading. It will be btn so on click load, and this will be for btn load, and one for deleting, and this is for btn delete. Starting with. The first method will go step by step through all of them. We need to begin by adding one string. We call it user input and user input will be equal to edit. This is from the edit text. We say get text. And then we convert it to string. So we take whatever is inside the this one this edit text, whatever the user inputs, we take it. And after that, we just say edit text dot get text and we clear because once we take the, the text and we save it inside our file, we don't want anything to be left over there. Okay, now we need to create a file output stream. And for that, we say file say like so file output stream from java in out and we give it the name and just give it the same name file output stream and to begin with we'll make it equal to null so we have no file output stream to begin with then we will create one and for this we say open file output 
and we give the file name and this has capital letters because this is a constant and this is the string above that this one that shows which is the name of our file and then what mode we open in and we say mode private only our application will deal with this file so we say mode private you can see this red underlining if you click on it and you check the light bulb it will say surround with try catch and of course we have to do that just to avoid some potentially unexpected errors that will crash our app and inside this try part we will continue writing our code so once we have this file output stream we need to write something so we say file output stream dot write and what we want to write is whatever the user has written so we have to take that part so we say user input we have this string over here user input however we cannot pass it as a string as it is we have to change it to bytes so we'll just get bytes okay this is what we write and then of course we have to let the user know what happened and as you can see we have this red underlining as well so we click and says add catch so we have to, uh, to catch another exception over here so don't worry this will add up a bit you don't have to write it by hand it's generated automatically but before we move any further let's take the text view and we will set some text just to notify the user about the actions being performed so we'll say that text was saved in and let's indicate the name of the file we'll just say file name so the text was saved inside this file name okay now obviously we have to close once we have opened this file output stream we have to close it we cannot leave it as it is open and for this we'll just say if this file output stream if this one is different from null okay because before it was null once this code is executed if everything works out just fine and we can uh, save the information inside the file uh, this file output stream would not will not be null anymore so here once we pass through this code if the file output is not null so we actually have opened it then we have to close it and for this we just say file output stream dot close again we have a red underlining it's another exception to be caught so you just say surround with try catch okay let's go to the part where we actually delete something or before we delete let's load the text so we have something inside our file and for this we need a file input stream where is it file input stream again from java in out and we'll just give it a name file input stream should be just fine and we'll make it null again to begin with this will use for the input from the file and then let's say file input stream this one and we open the file input and we have to pass a name of the file which you already know is this file name our string constant from above we have underlining again so guess what we have to add a try catch with this being added we continue writing our code so now we need a input stream reader let's select one from here input stream reader and the name it can stay the same input stream reader this will be a new input stream reader and we'll give from above the file input stream now i see that i have two brackets over here i only need one okay looks tidier like so let's move further to a buffered reader because now to make our uh, reading operations a bit easier we'll just have this buffered reader and as you can see i stick with the traditional names buffered reader will be this one this will be a buffered reader and we'll pass as argument the input stream reader from above 
So you can see input stream reader. So far, so good. Now we need to create, so because this buffer reader will help us to get the information from the file, but now we need to use that information to create our string, which we will display to the user. And for this, we'll just say a string builder. We need one of those. We'll give just a very creative name, string builder. And this will be, of course, a new string builder and leave it as such. Close it. Last thing that we need before we can proceed, we have a, a new string. And this string will be called, in my case, text from file. So this will be the text that we actually get from the file that we read. Okay, now let's start and read from the file. And we'll say that text from file, this will be equal to, we say buffered reader. You can see Android Studio already knows we need to read the line from the buffered reader. Now it's all good. However, we have an exception to catch. We actually just add another catch clause is enough, but we want to read from the file as long as there is something to read because we might have a line, then we have a new line and a new line. So every time we want to repeat this action until we finish the file. So let's create a loop. We'll say while, and let's put this entire expression into brackets. So while this part over here, the entire part, while this is different from null, and we have to close another set of brackets to put everything here together. So while we read from the file and we don't reach the end of the file, we keep reading. What we want to do is this. We take the string builder and we add, we use append and we give it a string. We append this text from file. Okay, so this overlaps, I can't see it, I have to write it text from file. And just in case we have multiple lines, our file might have multiple lines, we have to add a new line. So every time we read a new line, we'll add a new line to our string builder. So once this loop finishes, we should have the entire content of the file inside this string builder. We have to present it to the user. And for this, we'll say that text from file, this time will be equal to the string builder. So everything that we added in the string builder, now we put inside this string text from file, of course, in the form of a string. And we go to the text view. We set the text and we pass text from file. Okay, this should take care of it. We can save everything. This is the part that loads the information from the file and presents it to the user. And for deleting, I'll do something a bit, well, a bit creative or not. You'll be the judge of that. I just copy in the on click delete method. I just copy the entire part where we add something from the user, only this time, instead of adding the content of the edit text, I will just add nothing. So I will just open the file and I will write nothing just to actually delete what it was before. I overwrite the content with nothing. So I delete it somehow, if you want to call it as such. The rest will stay the same. I can save everything. And having selected my device, my virtual device, this Pixel phone, I can just open the app and see how it behaves. As you can see, the application has loaded in the emulator. I will just zoom in a bit so you can see it better. You have the app saying waiting for the text input and we can enter any text here. And we'll say, hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? First, we will add this text to a file and it says text saved in my saved data.txt 
Now, if I press the load button, it will say, hello, how are you? The information from the file. And if I press the delete button, it says that the text has been deleted and let's load again to see what's inside the file now. It's nothing because we deleted everything. So with this being said, this is just a very simple example of how to add some information to a file, how to save some info to a file. If you want to learn more about Android, then check the description of this video. You'll find plenty of links to other topics and uh, there are a lot of uh, educational videos in this channel. So until we meet again in the next video, keep learning, keep practicing, take care, and of course, see you next time.